So the next question is from TQ. It says, by the way, what's your actual name? Um, so my name is Fan, F-A-N. So hence the channel name is Heavenly Fan, um, whether you agree or not. Um, so that's my name. And this one is asked by Samba, Samba Aluminium, I think. And uh, <laughs> it says, I like your accent. Where are you from? Okay, so you might have seen some of my videos, the traveling videos. So um, I was born in Taiwan, um, Taipei, and, um, and then I spent some time in Japan as well, in my teens. So I speak Mandarin and some Japanese and some English. So um, there you go. So the next question I get asked quite often, other than why you're vegan, is that um, have you ever craved for meat or animal products? And I'll say not really. Um, I think I've craved for dairy since I became vegan. So there were periods of time, the pockets of times that um, I actually have some aches because my body kind of craved for it. That happened a few times. So when that happens, instead of in resisting it, I just have some eggs, get it out of my system, and then come back to vegan. So that's kind of generally my strategy. I've never really craved for meat products. And I think everyone is different, and there's no right or wrong. We're so deeply conditioned to eat animals. And just because we intellectually decide that we no longer want to eat animals, it doesn't mean your body follows. And I think that is such an important point. It kind of is partially what drives me to start this channel is to create a platform that I can communicate that or share experiences. Um, it's the fact that people tend to think that if, if you go vegetarian or go vegan and then one day you eat some meat products or animal products, you failed being a vegan. And there's no such a thing as failing being a vegan or vegetarian. You know, it's about accepting what is happening today and then be able to put that aside and move on. So um, even if you're uh, either tempted or for some, any reason, a lot of times when people travel, um, that's a story I hear most often, is they, they go traveling somewhere that is extremely difficult to eat vegan and then they ended up eating something that's got animal in it and they feel this terrible guilt and they feel they failed um, being a vegan so they continue eating animal products. I mean, that's the personal decision that's, you know, um, I'm, I'm in no position to judge. But I think it's such a shame because quite often I hear these people expressing the kind of sense of almost regret and go, well, I really love to go back to veganism, but I have some meat, <laughs> therefore I can't do it anymore. And, and for me, that, that doesn't make sense at all because what happened yesterday doesn't equal today. So you make new decisions. You can make decisions anytime. You can make decisions now that you can move forward with it. Uh, what happened yesterday is yesterday. Being a vegan in a world where majority of people are eating animals, it, it can be a bit of effort. I think, you know, after being vegan for, you know, seven, eight years, it becomes second nature, but there's still times that you have to kind of think about it. There's some situations you're just stuck, you have nothing to eat, and uh, that's just the way it is. But it doesn't happen that often. The point I'm making is that there's no ranking or medals to win. It's a very personal decision that you make and I make defines how I live, how you live. And um, it's extremely personal and it varies every day. And sometimes you have to make compromises and it doesn't mean that you ruin everything you've done before. You simply put that aside and uh, move forward. And that reminds me of a story that um, I, I used to work with a girl um, who is Australia, who's from Australia. And I think her parents were butchers in Australia. And, um, and she decided to go vegetarian. So we were the only, I was veggie at the time, so we were the only veggies in the village, you know, we were two, two veggies in the, in the company. So she came in one morning 
and uh, she had a, a bit of hangover. And she goes, you know what, Fan? I, um, I had a burger last night. I said, well, a, a burger? And, uh, and she goes, yeah, like a meat burger. I was like, oh. And uh, <laughs> I was a little bit surprised. But um, she kind of went, yeah, I had a burger. But she didn't go, well, I feel terrible about it. She just go, she just went back to being a veggie from that point on. That was totally fine. There was no, oh my God, I failed. And I thought that was a fantastic way of dealing with it because it's so much better and it makes us so much happier without getting into this black and white moral. I mean, think about it. You've been eating meat since, what, majority of us, unless you're brought up being a vegan or vegetarian, majority of us were brought up eating animals. And particularly in my case, I was brought up in Taiwan and, and Japan as well. And they eat all sorts of things. And I, I ate all sorts of things. And um, I'm in no position to judge people or even judge myself. You know, I'm more interested in moving forward rather than, you know, dwelling on things that, that's happened. And it's a long answer, but basically I haven't craved for um, meat products, but um, there were times that I had dairy and I'm fine with that. I basically do that and come back being a vegan and move forward. That's how I do it. So the next question is uh, quite a classic one, which is, um, if you're vegan, why do you want to eat food that look like meat? So I think the person's referring to um, like meat sausages or mock duck, you know, that kind of stuff, or soy meat, or if you're familiar with um, Asian cuisines, there will be a lot of food that's made to look like animals, but it's actually made of soy or gluten. So fundamentally, I don't have any problem with that. You can shape it like a kitten or human baby, I don't care, as long as it's made of plants. Um, and I think I can kind of understand, you know, in a kind of debate to say, well, if you don't want to eat um, pork, why would you want to make something that looked like bacon? Um, I, you know, I have had fake bacon, you know, vegan bacon before. So as I said, you know, majority of us on this planet are born and bred to eat animals. We're conditioned, deeply conditioned to eat anim animals. Um, and I think that's why majority of people, when they first decide to go vegan, the first thing they think about is, how do I replace these things I used to eat? The key word is replacement. And that's because we're so deeply conditioned to eat things that's got meat texture, that, that taste a certain way. When we no longer want to eat these things, we're thinking about how do I replace that rather than go, well, I just eat vegetables, right? For a majority of us, that probably wouldn't work very well because we'll crave for that kind of variety of textures and, and flavors. So fundamentally, I have no objection to anything that look like sausages or meatloaf or, or, or a kitten. As long as it's not animals, I don't really care. Personally, I don't want to eat that, but if other people find it enjoyable, they're free to do it. I think that kind of debate is kind of a slightly waste of time in my book. Um, I just think that if someone is making effort not to eat animals, just let it be. It doesn't matter. And um, um, so the next question is more to do with uh, um, one of the videos I made, which is how to make tofu. It's a video that's been really well received and, and I'm really, really happy about that. So quite a lot of you actually asked um, where you can get those wooden tofu press that I, I used on the video. So I actually got a, a tofu kit from a company called The Tofu Box. So I'll put a link below um, if you're interested. It's a UK-based company and they make really beautiful tofu, wooden tofu press. Because normally if you go on Amazon, you probably get the, the plastic ones. Um, they work as well. But I really love the, the ceremony of making tofu using the, the beautiful kit. So I'm not getting paid by them, it's not an advert, um, but they make such wonderful uh, products, so I fully support them. And if you're interested, I think they ship worldwide. So if you're interested, um, go on the website and order one. 
So um, there are a few more questions, but I'll park it for now. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to do another one of these, kind of like a regular thing. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and I'll try to answer them the best I can. But before I leave you, there's one more comment I want to share with you. So this one is asked by Mohan Lo. Hi, are you married? You look extremely pure, like the tofu. See you next time.